Hello booktube, it's time for my July book haul and like a lot of my book hauls recently it's quite large. I've broken it down by genre starting with fiction and then poetry, nonfiction, and ending with manga. Um, I've collected these books from a number of sources, Alibris, um, Book People, Pals, Labyrinth, um, and I'll talk a bit about uh, where I got the books from as I talk about them. So I picked up five novels, um, three of them from Discover Books through Alibris. Um, Alibris is a sort of, I guess, aggregate uh, used bookstore website that brings together a number of independent or quasi-corporate um, sellers. Uh, Discover Books is one of the cheaper sellers on the Libras. A lot of their books are a dollar, dollar forty-five, that sort of thing. And I sometimes buy rather large orders with them, usually about five or so books. Although the while the books themselves are relatively cheap, I mean a dollar forty-five, the shipping and handling is what does you in. It's a lot. Because they ship because it's by individual book rather than order. But anyway, so I picked up uh, three novels from Discover. Um, the other two books in the order I'll talk about later. Uh, two of them were published in 1983, uh, and I picked them up in large part because of uh, the birthday, no, the birth year book tag created by Criminali, in which one of the prompts was an invitation to read um, books that were published in your birth year, uh, whether you've read any or not. And I decided to try it out. So far, if you've been following my channel, you will know I haven't had much success, but hopefully these two will. Um, they were both published in 1983 in my birth year. Uh, they were both uh, shortlisted for the 1983 Booker Prize, and one of them won. And the winner is um, Life and Times of Michael K by James Coetzee. I've wanted to read Coetzee for a while and thought this would be a good place to start. Um, so, and I'll get back to you how it turns out uh, when I read it. I also picked up um, Shame by Sal Salman Rushdie. This was the one of the shortlisted novels. And I've also been meaning to read Rushdie for ages, so looking forward to getting to this. Um, the third book I picked up, or third novel I picked up uh, from Discover, uh, is it, was it published in 1983, and, uh, or at least I don't think it was. Um, but it's by an author that I've wanted to have another go at, and that is... Um, my name is read by Orhan Pamuk. Uh, I first read one of his books, I think it was The Black Book, uh, shortly after Pamuk won the uh, Nobel Prize in Literature, and I didn't get on with it. In fact, I think I rather quickly bailed on it. But I've wanted to have another go at Pamuk's work ever since, and um, thought My Name is Red would be a good place to start. So I'm looking forward to having another go at Orhan Pamuk. And I'm kind of thinking maybe if I don't get to My Name is Red or Life in Times of Michael K, I might do a Nobel Prize in Literature project sometime next year. But anyway, so those were the three novels I picked up from Discover. I also picked up two novels uh, from Book People. So on June 20th, uh, book people did a, well, they closed for inventory. And to make up for it, they had a 10% off sale on online orders. And I took advantage of that and bought two novels. Now, the reason why I'm talking about these two in my July book haul and not my June book haul is because around this time, uh, book people got a influx of online orders. And they were sorely behind on kind of working their way through them. 
and compounding by that is that at the time they were also short staffed. So a lot of the orders around this time and even earlier in June were held up. And so I didn't get this until um, early July. I think it was like July 1st or so that I actually got this in. Um, so the two books are The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. This just recently won the Women's Prize in Fiction. And I'm really enjoyed uh, Ozeki's earlier novel, A Tale for the Time Being, and I'm really looking forward to getting to this. And I also picked up uh, Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. This is a Mexican novel um, that was shortlisted for the International Booker a few years ago, and I thought it sounded interesting. It's about the murder of a transgendered uh, curandera. And it just, it sounds very fascinating. And you will be seeing that book in the not too distant future. Uh, moving on to poetry. Um, the first four of the five poetry collections I picked up uh, come from PUP, the Princeton University Press. They had a 50% off sale in mid-June that I took advantage of and decided to pick up some poetry collections that I wasn't able to pick up uh, during Pup's uh, earlier 75% off sale, largely because these four weren't on sale, um, but they were now, so picked them up. Uh, one of the collections is new to me, uh, or the poet who wrote it's new to me, and the other two are by poets that I've previously, or three are from poets that I've previously really enjoyed. So. The collection that is new to me is uh, Hosting Guests by Nate Klug. This is a um, really enjoyable collection. I've already read the four from Pup, and I'll talk a bit about them later on tonight when I do my weekly read. So this one was quite good. I also picked up two by Troy Jolimar uh, at Lake Skakog. Um, this is his debut with the Prince and Poets series, um, and I quite liked it, although not as much as uh, his middle volume, Syllabus of Errors. And I also picked up uh, John Moore's most recent work with the um, Prince and Poets series, and that is Earthly Delights, which I have a bit more mixed feelings on. There are a few poems in here that I really love that are absolutely hilarious. And then there's one that I really did not get on with at all. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. And I also picked up um, Almanac by Austin Smith. Uh, this is Austin Smith's debut with Princeton Poets. I loved his earlier collection, or his more recent collection, Flyover Country. And I quite like this one too, although not as much as Flyover Country. And for a Midtown Scholar, um, through Alibris, Midtown Scholar is um, a used bookseller from, I want to say Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I know they're in Pennsylvania, and I've shopped with them quite a bit in the past and really love uh, my interactions with them. And I decided to uh, pick up a poetry collection from them that I've been wanting to pick up for a while. And that is The Swamp Monster at Home by Catherine W. Carter. Um, I really loved um, Carter's more recent uh, Larvae of the Nearest Stars, and I'm looking forward to reading more of her work. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this sometime in the next few weeks. Am I spoiling one of my book reading projects? Yes, I am. But I'll talk a bit more about that next Friday. Moving on to nonfiction, I have four works of nonfiction. Uh, two of them uh, rounded out the five books I ordered with a Libris through uh, Discover. And they are Cat by Catherine W. Rogers, or Catherine M. Rogers. This is um, a part of the animal series out of Reaction Books that I've fallen in love with the past year and I'm looking forward to collecting them all. And so I'm really looking forward to reading Cat. 
and also picked up Dog by Susan McHugh. Again, part of the animal series from Reaction Books. And I'm looking forward to reading this one too. The next two works of nonfiction I picked up, I picked up from Book Depository. Their uh, Book Depository is an online uh, British bookseller who um, sells um, like British copies and uh, ship across the world, including the United States. Although usually you can expect about a two week between order and delivery, or at least that's been my experience. I picked up and they also include wonderful bookmarks with the books. And I picked up two from them this month. Um, first is The Wild Places by Robert McFarlane. Um, I really enjoyed McFarlane's uh, most recent work, um, Underland. I thought it was my favorite book of the books I read for the 2020 uh, Book Two Prize nonfiction. Um, thought it should have done better than it did. And I'm really, I've been looking forward to picking up more of McFarlane's work and quite happy to have The Wild Places. And also picked up Lost Paradise by Elizabeth Drayden. This is a history of Grenada and the last Muslim kingdom of Spain. And I've been wanting to pick this up ever since I saw it previewed last year. Um, this is out from Head of Zeus Books and Head of Zeus's book, their hardcovers tend to be rather expensive. And so I've, I'm in the habit of uh, waiting for the trade paperbacks for them to release out of the UK because once they release them in the UK, they're really inexpensive, um, as this one was. And I'm really looking forward to getting to Lost Paradise. <sighs> now we come to the manga, uh, which is mm, significantly more than half probably about two thirds of what I picked up. I'm going to break the manga down by a uh, uh, number of volumes. So I'll start off with um, first volumes and then individual volumes and then two volumes and then move up to more unless there's um, like a find of the month, which there is. Um, that I'm quite pleased about. So I'm going to start off with the last book I got this month. Uh, I got it in Tuesday because I pre-ordered it from Amazon. And that is Tokyo Revengers. This is an omnibus edition including volumes one and two. Um, Tokyo Revengers is by Ken Wakui and it's about a man who discovers the ability to travel back in time 10 years. Um, and he uh, basically takes these opportunities to try to change his future as well as those around him. I've been wanting to read Tokyo Revengers for uh, quite a while and I'm so looking forward to getting to it. Um, in the in single volumes that I picked up, um, I picked up two. Uh, volume 2 of Noragami Stray God by Adachi Toka. This is about a uh, down on his luck a god uh, trying to find more worshippers. I really enjoyed volume 1 and I'm quite looking forward to getting to volume 2. I also, and I picked that up from Amazon. Um, also from Amazon through a pre-order is Kaiju number 8 volume 3 by Naoya Matsumoto. Uh, Kaiju number eight is about a man named Kafka who uh, works for a cleanup crew um, specializing in cleaning up the after effects of kaiju fights. Um, one day during a, a cleanup operation, he is injured, and while in the hospital, he is attacked by a dragonfly like kaiju that turns him into a human kaiju hybrid. Uh, Kafka uses this transformation to inspire himself to reapply to a special force within the Japanese self-defense forces that specialize in fighting kaiju. Uh, Kafka and his uh, colleague uh, make it, although um, 
Kafka is a bit provisional and Kafka then uses not only his um, knowledge of kaiju anatomy, but also his ability to transform into a human kaiju hybrid to basically fight kaiju. I really loved volumes one and two, and I'm really looking forward to volume three. I picked up um, two volumes of um, Jujutsu Kaisen from Amazon. I picked up a uh, volume two, uh, and they're by Gege Akutami. This is volume two, and this is volume three. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen is about a young man named um, Itadori, who um, joins his high school's uh, occult investigation club. He finds a cursed object. Uh, which unfortunately attracts uh, monsters. A uh, young sorcerer comes to sort of find the cursed object and fight the monster, but he's overmatched, so Itadori um, eats the cursed object, which allows him to be temporarily taken over by the evil sorcerer whose um, body part the cursed object was. And so after the th immediate threat is over, um, Itadori is um, taken into custody and is given the option to either be immediately executed or basically, since he can consume these cursed objects without too much, I mean, hassle, he can basically control and fight off the possession to go ahead and eat the rest of um the cursed bits of the evil sorcerer that are still around, and then be executed. I love the first volume, and I'm really looking forward to continuing on with the series. Uh, from Labyrinth Books, they're a used bookstore, new and used bookstore that's affiliated with Princeton University. I picked up uh, three books. Uh, two of them are volumes of My Hero Academia by Kohei Horikoshi. Uh, I picked up volume two and volume three. Uh, My Hero Academia is a superhero inspired series about a young boy named Midoriya who is born quirkless in a world where, or without superpowers, where 80% of the population has a superpower. Um, Midoriya loves superheroes. He wants to be one, but Without any powers, what can he do? One day he is attacked by a slime space supervillain and is rescued by All Might, the greatest superhero in the setting. Uh, the villain manages to escape while Midoriya and All Might are talking and attacks a classmate of Midoriya's named Bakugo, this individual here. Um, Midoriya comes across Bakugo being attacked and a crowd unable to do anything, not even the superheroes. And it's Midoriya who acts. He runs and tries as much as he can to help Bakugo, even though Midoriya has no powers. And this inspires All Might to act, to intervene again and see something in Midoriya that um, inspires All Might to uh, pass on his quirk, his power, um, one for all, to uh, Midoriya t in order to aid him in becoming a superhero. And so he does. And I really loved Volume 1. I'm really looking forward to reading more of My Hero Academia. Uh, from Pals, um, I picked up two volumes of um, The Seven Daily Sins by Nakaba Suzuki. Uh, volume 7 and Volume 8. Um, the Seven Deadly Sins is about a princess whose family had been overthrown by a uh, order of knights called the Holy Knights who have become increasingly tyrannical. In order to defeat the Holy Knights, the princess Elizabeth goes in search of the Seven Deadly Sins, another order of the knighthood who were accused um, about 16 years 
prior to the start of the series of trying to overthrow the kingdom. Uh, Elizabeth finds members of the uh, Seven Deadly Sins and they together uh, go get the band back together to try to fight against the Holy Knights. I'm really loving this series. Um, I basically pick up a volume or two every month and I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to getting to more of it. <sighs> Moving on to um, Kiro Mashima. Uh, he's my favorite uh, mangaka or creator of manga. I picked up um, six volumes of Fairy Tale and uh, one volume of Eden Zero. So um, I picked up volumes 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32 of Fairy Tale. Uh, Fairy Tale is my favorite manga series. It's about the adventures of a team of wizards who are part of the Fairy Tale Wizarding Guild. Um, volumes 27, 28, 29, and part of 30 um, wrap up the Sirius Island arc, which is my favorite arc of Fairy Tale. And then beginning with 30 and then 31, 32 begins a new arc um, called the Grand Magic Games. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to these. Um, I picked up volumes 27, 28, and 29 from Book People. I ordered these three uh, volumes early in June, but um, again, they were, had to be special ordered, uh, which took about a week or so to get to Austin. And then around this time, uh, Book People had their um, influx of online orders, which basically made it difficult, like they were backlogged. And so I had to email them to pretty much speed up uh, getting these two volumes sent out. And then when it was shipped, it ended up going to Washington DC and North Carolina for a little bit before finally getting its way back to me. But I'm quite happy to have them. And then volumes 30, 31, and 32, I picked up from PALS, uh, the independent bookseller in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, also from Book People, I picked up uh, Eden Zero, Volume 17. Um, I have uh, 17, 18, and 19 uh, pre-ordered uh, from Book People. Um, Eden Zero is Hiromishima's current work. It's about a young boy or a young man named Shiki who was raised on a planet uh, populated by androids um, as a tourist planet. Uh, slowly, the androids are starting to fall apart and break down when one day a young woman named Rebecca and her exceed companion Happy uh, come to film a video. Uh, the robots seem to malfunction and attack Rebecca and Happy. Uh, Shiki rescues Rebecca and Happy and joins them in their escape from the planet and they go on a number of adventures with the goal of finding Mother, the great cosmic goddess figure. Uh, Shiki and Rebecca and Happy gather together a crew of very interesting characters and have adventures. Uh, volume 17 is part of the War of the Aoi, or Aoi, yeah, Aoi Cosmos that I'm really looking forward to reading. Um, I also finished off um, Full Metal Alchemist. When I ended uh, June, I had well, five volumes left before I completed uh, Full Metal Alchemist. And I have those five volumes. I have volumes 15, 16, 17, 18, wait, 26. This is volume 26. And volume 27. And I picked them up from Amazon. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist is about two brothers. 
Edward and Alphonse Elric. Um, they are young alchemists who, in an attempt to bring their deceased mother back to life, perform a forbidden alchemical ritual, human transmutation. As a price for this um, forbidden transmutation, um, Edward loses a leg, and Alphonse loses his entire body. To save Alphonse's life, Edward sacrifices an arm to transcribe Alphonse's soul onto a suit of armor. In the aftermath of this event, Edward joins the state military as a state alchemist and eventually goes in pursuit of the Philosopher's Stone, an alchemical artifact reputed to be able to bypass the laws of equivalent exchange. As Edward and Alphonse travel through their country of Amestras, they become enmeshed in a long-running conspiracy that ultimately sees both brothers as in key parts of their final plan. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite manga series and I am really looking forward to reading the entire series in September. Now ordinarily completing Full Metal Alchemist would have been the uh, finds of the month. But, I actually got um, two volumes of manga that I've been wanting for a few months now. Um, and that is Tolabound Hanaka-kun by Aide Iro. I picked up a volume four from a seller on Amazon um, that I've been looking for for ages and nobody has a copy of it so quite happy to have it uh from um waldman's books um i got uh finally got a uh, volume seven of taliban hanako kun um so waldman's is so i ordered these books or volume seven as well as volume four uh about in may or maybe even late April. And um, it looked like a good deal. I mean, they were relatively cheaper than, they were discounted. Um, there was free shipping if you bought more, like over a certain amount. And so I'm like, okay, it sounds like a good deal. And they have the books in stock. So, and I've been looking everywhere for them. Come to find out they didn't actually have the books in stock. Um, Wildman's, while inexpensive, they have the tendency, I think, they don't have a warehouse. So they basically have to special order everything in from Ingram's, the uh, book wholesaler or, and distributor. And so it can take time to get them in, which um, a lot of um, customers have uh, viewed as sort of them not really providing the product that they say they have, even though they say it's basically most of this is going to be special order and it could take up to 20 weeks or so before the books come in, which was my experience. Um, I had three books out with them. One of them I got uh, like about maybe a month after I ordered it, um, after I'd ordered that copy from someone else, which is why I've never hauled it. And then uh, volume seven just popped up out of the blue. I'm like, huh, cool. So it basically, while be cautious with Waldman's, I think um, the books may eventually get to you. Although I'm still waiting for volume four because I haven't gotten that one yet, but I did get volume seven. And so, yeah, it's all good. And I picked up uh, volume 11 of Taliban Hanaka-kun from uh, Labyrinth. So, Taliban Hanaka-kun is about an incredibly cursed uh, school in Japan. The main, one of the main characters, Nene, is told that if she goes to Pacific um, stall, restroom stall, and performs a specific ritual, she can summon the uh, spirit known as the toilet bound Hanako-san. Nene goes to the specific stall, performs the ritual, 
and instead of the usual uh, young girl who is associated with the um, spirit, she is met by a young boy, Hanako-kun, who um, is named Amane. Um, Amane decides to grant um, Nene her wish, and it goes completely wrong for her. Um, it means a really sort of problematic wish. But, um, and Amane rescues her from the consequences in exchange for her um, basically doing chores for him. It, initially, it's just cleaning his uh, toilet stall. Um, but it eventually it grows into aiding him and managing the other hauntings, mysteries of this school. Um, this school seems to be incredibly haunted. And there are seven great hauntings called mysteries, and then there are lesser hauntings. Um, Amane, as the seventh mystery, uh, sort of has a regulatory authority over the others. Um, joining Nene and Amane is Ko, who is a young um, exorcist in training who initially seeks to um, exorcise Amane, but eventually becomes uh, friends. And it's an amazing sort of, I talked about this before, scene where um, uh, Ko's older brother tries to exorcise Amane and Ko just um, stands up for him and says, he's my friend, don't do this. It's just, I'm really looking forward to getting back to Twilight Bound Hanako-kun. It has been months since I've read it. And I think one of my goals for this coming month is to um, finish off the, pretty much get caught up with Twilight Bound Hanako-kun, which I've been meaning to do for a while. I do have the forthcoming volumes on pre-order with Powell, so they should be coming in over the next few months, and um, I'll go ahead and pick, and I've got uh, some volumes coming in from Powell's, and then I'll go ahead and pick up what I'm missing, maybe from Amazon or somewhere, and then also continue to pick up a uh, fairy tale. I've got, um, although it may not come in until September, uh, Eden Zero and a whole bunch of other manga and other things as well. So that was my June book haul. Now I'm going to have to go upload this video, put them in the show notes, and then go find homes for them. All except for the ones that I'm going to be reading. Those I'll leave out. But anyway, booktube. Again, that was my July book haul. I will see you in a few hours with uh, weekly reads. So until then, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.